Hello friends! Today I wanted to share a little book haul, medium book haul, it's not really that little. Um, I haven't really been buying as many books because, and I feel like I say that every time, but I've been trying not to buy as many books because my shelf is pretty full and it's, I need to read a lot of the books that I have. But I have been making progress on those lately because I knew that my friend and I were going to be going book shopping like you saw in the last video, or maybe the video before last, depending on what order these videos get posted. Um, and I purposely didn't buy books leading up to that because I knew that we would be going book shopping and I wanted to get some books while I was with her. So these are the books that I got while I was with her, starting with the books that I got from the thrift store. So at the thrift store, I spent $5.70. Um, $3 of that though was not books. So I spent two seventy on books. That's not too bad, terrible. Uh, two seventy on books. These are the books that I got. So, first book I got was a paperback. I don't normally get paperbacks, but this is one that I have seen some of the movie clips, and I wanted to watch them, but I didn't realize there were books. So this is Topper Takes a Trip by Thorn Smith, and I've seen the Topper movies. I think I've watched one or two of them. But it's been a while and so since I saw the book I decided I would try it and see if I liked reading it and then maybe see if I could find the movie because I think there's a Topper Takes a Trip movie. Um, this is funny I just noticed this it says send this book to a boy in the armed forces anywhere for only three cents postage. So yeah that's the first book that I got and that one was 25 cents. Then I got a book that I already have Donna Parker. I got this book because I am collecting a series and even though I do have this first book, this is the first book in the series I believe, um, I got it anyway because we enjoy it and I know my sisters will want to read it and I like having an extra copy of series we like so that I can lend books out to friends. So I got this one. This was I think because this was a children's book it was only Yeah, because this was a children's book, it was only 25 cents, because normally hardcovers are a dollar, but because it was a children's book, it was only 25 cents. And on the inside, it was kind of funny. I'm not going to say the girl's last name, because I try not to do that, even though I don't know if they're still around. But anyway, in this book, I saw it said Donny Osmond, and I'm like, this was definitely not his book, because it's a girl book, and just, like, the chances of that were extremely thin, slim. But then I realized someone wrote Vicky, and then her last name, plus Donnie Osmond, and I thought that was kind of funny. She was very, um, she was very worried about losing this book. She wrote her name so many times in this book, and saying that this book belonged to her. Anyway, this was a fun, like, preteen book that I got. Next book I got, again, I already have a copy of this book, but... I love the Heloise books, and even though I had a copy of this, I was only able to find paperback. So when I saw there was a hardcover, I had to get this. And I originally thought it was 25 cents, but then once I got to the register, they said that hardcovers were a dollar. So I did pay a dollar for this, but I still thought that was a good deal. And I really enjoyed her books. And this way, I have one to lend out. It's just full of a ton of helpful tips for around the house, in the home, in the garden all over. It's really good. Then I got two children's books. These were 25 cents each. So I got Bimbleman's, Bimbleman's, yeah, Bimbleman's Bakery. This one I saw recommended on someone's Instagram stories a while back, and so I just picked it up. I haven't read it yet, but I prefer the older books. Also, look at how pretty there is a kid drew in this, but Look at how pretty that pattern is. Reminds me of like vintage wallpaper. It's like pink and orange, like a burnt orange background. And I thought this is cute. And it would be fun to read aloud to my siblings. So I got that one. And then the last book that I got at that thrift store was Sylvester Fair Overslept by Jan Wall. And this one just seemed like a book that Mark Simeon would really, really love, and so it has Araya. So I had to get that. 
and I flipped through that one, but I have yet to read it to them. So I'm excited to read that to them. I'll probably do that today. I think they'll really enjoy it. Then I had um, some credits on thrift books that were going to expire. So I did make a purchase there as well. I got Cherry Ames Boarding School Nurse and Cherry Ames Breast Home Nurse. These have been so hard to get. We are trying to collect the series. We have up until book nine. Um, and they've just been books 10, 11, and 12 have all been so hard to get. They've been listed on thrift books and Etsy and stuff, but all for like $10 or $15 or something. And I try not to spend more than like $7 on a book because unless it's a new book that someone like just wrote, but for secondhand books, I try not to spend more than $7 because I just, that's just kind of my threshold for me. Um, and if it's under $7, then I can get it with a free book credit. So normally $6 and higher or five fifty dollars and higher, I try to use a free book credit on it and the rest of them I'll just buy. So when I saw that these were available for the first time in a long time, I got them. These are books 17 and I think the other one's 15 in the series. Then I got Annette Mystery at Medicine Wheel. This is another girl series. I have one other in the series but I have yet to read this one and then there's again book art appreciation even like the simple art in the old books I really really love this used to belong to a girl named Naomi and then the very last book that I got from thrift books I try not to ever pay for shipping on thrift books so I always just add enough that I don't have to pay for shipping. Um, this book I was a little bit disappointed. As you can tell, it's just a plain beige book that the dust jack is missing from. This is Gold by Stuart Edward White. And in the copy that I saw on Thrift Books, it was... And this is from 1913, so that was cool. And the copy that I saw on Thrift Books was also from 1913, but it had a much prettier cover. Look at that art. I love it. And this is a story about the Gold Rush days, and I've heard that it's really accurate, actually. Um, I think that the author was, I could be incorrect in this, but I'm pretty sure the author was a gold miner. So, I thought that would be interesting to read. I prefer to read history books written from around the time that it actually happened, so that there's more chance of them being accurate. Um, and to get a perspective of someone who lived through it. I think is just more interesting. <laughs> now all of these books that I'm about to show you I got for seven dollars total. These two stacks. Someone had dropped off in the like free area um, of books their like entire collection or someone's collection and we happen to have like the exact same taste in books. So I got all but two of those books. One of them was a science book and the other one was like, I think it was called A Month of Christmases or something. Anyway, so those are the only two that I left behind. I got everything else in that box that was, they had lots of boxes, but this box was someone's collection. Had library stickers, which I took off most of the books, um, saying who they had belonged to. And I was so excited. So I love old school books. I have a bit of a soft spot for them. I think they're really cool. When I was younger, I would look through them and I just loved how they taught things. Um, I preferred it over more of the, most of the more modern school books. So I got these and look at how pretty the art is. I just love these kind of like softer colors that they used. This book does not have a date on it. It's called Wonder World of Science, book four. And it just looks to be really good. So I got this one. It's the first one. All of these books, with the exception of this one, uh, were from the 50s and 60s. So that was really cool. i take off this sticker. I forgot one of the library stickers. It was like a private library, not an actual library. But this is Juliet Lowe, Girl Scout by Helen Boyd Higgins. I used to read, I don't know how many of you are 
familiar with these series, but when I was growing up, a lot of the homeschool families owned books from this series. Um, Childhood of Famous Americans. So I read so many. I probably read like 70 or more of these when I was younger because everybody had them and I would go to their house and I would just read. <laughs> Whenever we were there, I would just read so much. Um, the next book I got was The Sky Observer's Guide, 151 Paintings and Photographs. It's another, not a school book, but a learning educational book. It was a handbook for amateur astronomers and it has some like really cool photos in here too I thought this would neat be neat I ever since I was like really little I love to find all the constellations in the sky and I thought there's some constellations on the back but it's not I always love to find the constellations in the sky um, so I thought this would be a fun book to get. And the pages are nice and thick, so it should hold up to a lot of wear. Then I got Mountain Stallion by Logan Forster. This has that really cool, really easy to clean binding that I like. And thick pages, the library binding method. So this is from 1958. And these pages just feel so soft and thick and nice. Trying to find some good pictures. So here's one picture. Then I got Thaddeus Lowe. Let me see. Thaddeus Lowe, America's One Man Air Corps by Mary Holing. Not sure entirely what it's all about, but <laughs> it looked interesting and I had to get it. Then I got the Telescope by Harry Edward Neal, illustrated with photographs and line drawings. And it's talking about, I think, the history. It looks like they're talking about the history of like, telescopes, the people that worked on them. It's kind of written in story th theme. And the photos are in the middle, it looks like. Yes. Then the next book is Horse Chestnut Hideaway by Stella Rappaport. Bright orange cover. Super cute. And this is 1959, our 40th year of New Method Book Bindery Incorporated. Bound to stay bound. And it has some really cool illustrations. They're like really... I don't know what it is about these, I just really like them. Especially this one. Kind of simple, but still highly detailed. That's a cute one. <laughs> and here's another one. This looks like it'd be a really fun book. Um, I think I'll read it aloud to my younger siblings think that they'd like it. It's kind of reminding me of Caddy Woodlawn and I think it will be a good one. Alright, last of those photos. There's quite a few photos of this. Look at that little girl's curls. That's so cute. Alright, the last book I got from the 50s was one that I think that I would have loved as a kid, like seven, eight, nine. I think I would really, really love this book because I was really into reading about Indians and how they lived, fictional stories about them, real stories about them, survival-length books, pioneering books. I just really loved all books like that. And this is Nanak, Friend of Little Turtle by Zoe Tilgman. Like, I just know that I would have loved that book. And thick pages again, some neat photos. This one's from 1955. I 
think my brothers will like this one too. A lot of very colorful pictures in here. All right, and then on to books from the 60s. Get that out of the way. Well, first books from the 70s. This one is Up in a Balloon by Leonard Contrell or Cotrell, I'm not sure. And it's all about I think that this is actually has a lot of yeah, this is the history of hot air balloons and things, it looks like. So that will be really interesting. There are just a couple photos in here, not too many. Then this one, another one that I think I would have really loved when I was younger, and I probably still will, but especially when I was younger, I would have loved it. It's called Mystery of the Absent Neighbors by Ruth C. Wood. I loved mysteries. Um, I read Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys. I read, I always want to call it Ten Commandment Cousins, but I don't think that's the actual name of it. I'll just put it right here. Um, I read that series. I read the Mandy series. I just really loved mystery books, so I know I would have loved this one. It says, when Nancy and her brother Kevin spend the summer in the mountains at the sheep camp, also at the summer home of their aunt and uncle, they become interested in a mystery house. Richly furnished, its doors unlocked, the house is never molested. Sheep herders shun it. Apparently no one lives there, but Nancy and Kevin believe that someone lives in the house. And Anna believe that someone loves, not loves, not lives, loves the house. An amateur de detective, Kevin tries to solve the mystery. Striving to develop courage and overcome fears, Nancy helps him. Um, so yeah, I think this will be a fun one. I'm probably going to read this pretty soon because, I don't know, I'm excited about it. Then, this is The Return of Mojav Joe. Mojave, Mojave Joe. I, I have this thing, I read so many books that were ahead of my reading level that a lot of times I mispronounce words because I read them when I was really young. <laughs> And I only had read the words. I had never heard them. So so sometimes I want to say Mojave instead of Mojave. So The Return of Mojave Joe by Dustin C. Scott, illustrated by Charles H. Greer. After escaping captivity, a resourceful coyote once again fights for survival in his native Californian wilderness. The 50s kids books just had some cool art. I feel like books before that were more kind of refined, polished, library-like. And then the 50s and 60s, they're just cute kids' books with really nice art. Then I got Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I have neither read the books or watched the movie. And my friend who was with me said that the book is way better than the movie and that she loved it. It was hilarious. So I got it and... I hope to read that pretty soon. There's and I think this one was <laughs> this is funny. There are five children in this book. Augustus Gloop, a greedy boy. Veraca Salt, a girl who is spoiled by her parents. Violet Bogard, a girl who chews gum all day. Mike TV, a boy who does nothing but watch television, and Charlie Bucket, the hero. So this one should be fun to read. I'm excited. Then I got Whispering Willows by Elizabeth Hamilton Fried Frymore, not Fried. And it's about this tom girl, tomboyish girl named Tess who lives with her uncle near the edge of Willow Hill Cemetery, where he's the caretaker. And this is from 1964. This one looks really interesting. I'm not going to take the time to read the whole thing on it, but it sounds really interesting. Then this is another one that I think is just kind of funny and should be entertaining. This is Desmond the Dog Detective, The Case of the Lone Stranger by Herbert Best, illustrated by Lillian Obli Obligo. Ligado? I'm not sure. And 
apparently there's more in this series, of course. Like, it's a dog detective. And this is an actual dog, so for some reason I was thinking when I first read it, it was going to be that a boy with a dog. No. It's a dog. I just didn't, it didn't register in my brain when I read it the first time. Also, by Herbert Best, is Desmond's first case, Desmond and the Peppermint Ghost. So, this art really reminds me of Henry and Ribsy. Like, it totally looks like it could be them. The dog's a little bit different, but it looks very, very similar. This should be a very amusing light read. So, I'll probably read it soon, so, since I can get through it quickly. Then it's a, like, autobiography style book. And this is Carol Heiss, Olympic Queen. Oh, I just realized there's two pages in here. So this talks all about Carol Heiss, who was who won the gold medal for figure skating at the 1960 Winter Olympic Games. The first gold medal the United States has had won. So that is cool. It talks all about her life, and I think it should be really interesting. There's another picture of her. She's really pretty, holding a skate. That's another thing. I went through a phase when I was about, probably about 10, maybe 11, of being really interested in, like, the Olympic Games, people who participated in the Olympic Games. It was just really interesting to me. So I read a lot of biographies, autobiographies by people who raced, or I was thinking of a particular Olympic um, participant. That's why I said raced, but people that participated in the Olympic Games. Um, this is Congo Explorer, Pierre Sarvorgan de, Bra de Braza, 1852 through 1905 by Jeanne Carbonier. And this is about this man. So there's a few biographies, autobiographies, I mean. Then the very last book I got was Across the Blue Bridge, the Prose and Poetry series. I like the colors in this. It's just fun. And this is kind of a school book. It has different units, different stories. There's stories by a lot of different people. Um, so I thought this would be fun for like school time because I'd like to read aloud to the kids more often. So this is about, I think, yeah, there's a small portion that's from The Wind in the Willows. It's like a condensed version of that story. This is called Bang Bang Wham the story. It's like a 4th of July story. So yeah, there's some Bible stories in here, regular stories. It's just a typical reader, easy reader kind of book. Um, I'm not sure what grade this is for. It does not say. But it has multiple units in this. And I think this would be good for like incorporating into school. And that is it. Those are the books that I got and I thought I would share them with you. I've not read most of them, but a lot of them look really good, and I like to just kind of share those for inspiration, and because it's exciting to see books that other people have gotten. I love to see the books they choose. I always just gravitate towards the ones that look older. Um, basically, if they look like they're from the 50s or 60s or older, I'm most likely getting them, <laughs> as long as they're a good price. Um, and thrift stores are a good place to find books like that. They will be kind of scattered throughout. You're not going to find usually a lot at once. These were from an actual bookstore, so I think that's why I found so many. The most I've gotten at a thrift store at a time, I think, is about 10 to 15. Um, and that was usually when I had not been there in months and months, or sometimes years. And then they've kind of built up and you can get them. Um, another place to get them is like... Goodwill bins. I rescued a ton of like Bobsy Twin books and things like that from those um, because if they do not sell in a certain amount of time, Goodwill sends them to the bins where people get one last chance at buying things before they get sent to the dump. So it's sad to me to think that so many books make it to Goodwill bins, but it is nice whenever I can get out there and rescue them. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, Give it a thumbs up, please. It really helps the channel. And comment below what are some books that 
are either on your list to get or that you have recently purchased because like why not it'd be fun to talk about the books we've gotten can't buy them we can at least talk about them <laughs> and i will see you in the next video bye